Hey guys, so I've been using my B11 Ultra for just a couple of days now. And apart from uh, a lot of good things to say and a few hiccups here and there, uh, I'm going to keep that uh, for a different video. This is going to be primarily about the amount of customization that MIUI offers. And it's a huge list. There is so much you can change and the amount of things that it allows you to do is just insane. And it's good in a way, at the same time, it can get really confusing. So if you are using your Mi 11 Ultra or you've just ordered and you're waiting for them to arrive, this video will help you because I'm going to go through some of the most essential customizations that will help you in your day to day usage. And um, it will be easier for you to, you know, use this video as a reference to find out those settings when and if you get this phone. So we are going to straight dive into settings and I'm not going to go through all, but rather the ones that really make the most sense and will come to use when you get this phone. So first I'm going to go over something very simple, which is the SIM and mobile networks. If you click on this, right now I have it on flight mode so that I don't get any calls and get interrupted and I'm using a geo line. So now if we go down, you can see you have make calls using Wi-Fi. So basically like Geo allows Wi-Fi calling. So if you have Wi-Fi in your house, you can just connect, I mean, turn this on and you can use Wi-Fi calling. Now, this is a mixed review I've heard from many. For me, at least my experience using Wi-Fi calling was not good. Uh, if you go to Geo's website, they really want you to use Wi-Fi calling and make a big deal out of it. But for me, it wasn't a very good experience because there were drops in calls, there was a problem. And this is not talking about any problem about the phone. Even when I had my iPhone 11 Pro Max and I used Wi-Fi calling, I would face the same issue. So it's something to do with Geo and not the phone. But if you wanted to know where or how you toggle Wi-Fi calling, then it is in this setting. So you go into SIM cards and mobile networks, choose your SIM. And if you go down and if your network carrier allows, you can turn on make calls using Wi-Fi. Okay, next we're going to go into connection and sharing. So if you have an, more Mi devices lying around in your house, you can use Mi Share. And I'm guessing this is kind of similar to AirDrop on iPhones. Now, I don't have any other Mi device in my house. This is the first one. So I haven't used it, but from what I read, this allows you to share directly. I haven't been able to verify how good this is, but if you do have me devices lying around, this is something you can check out and you can just toggle me share. You can turn it on and if turn on Wi-Fi, you can then use it. Now under me share, we have cast, which basically will cast the screen of your phone to any device that is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your phone and also supports casting. So those are mostly smart TVs and any Android TV, I'm guessing. So with this, you can do that. If you want to give a demo or if you want to show us something, this is what you can do. And now you have different options where you can cast with screen off, you can minimize the window and you can hide private items, such as if you get an incoming call while you're casting something, you have the ability to stop that from being cast on the screen. It'll just show up on your phone. Now for printing, if you go inside here, again, you have to have a printer that is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your phone. So a Wi-Fi printer, obviously, and it'll detect that. And once you add that, you can wirelessly print any document, any email that you get on your phone or whatever it is that you want to print using that printer. OK, next we're going to go into always on display and lock screen. So always on display, it's on for me right now. So if you go into this menu, you can customize a number of things. So firstly, you can toggle it on or off. Then you can decide what items you want it to display. So it's going to be on for 10 seconds when you tap your screen. If it's always on, then it's going to consume more power or you can schedule it if you want it to come on at a particular time. So I leave it to the first one, which is 10 seconds. You can choose different themes, so you can use a custom image, so you can choose an image from your gallery or you can choose some preset ones, you can choose signatures where you can write whatever you want and that will be displayed on the screen. You have some preset watches. So these are some things you can mess around with. So underneath always on display, we have when notifications come and the screen is off. So when your phone is lying idle and you get a notification, so what should your phone do? 
Now I have it to light up screen because if it comes in, just let me know. But there are some cool effects here such as rhythm, you have pulse, so you can choose whatever you want. So this is kind of cool because if you don't want the contents to show up, but you still want to be notified as to a notification that has come. So this is a very cool way of getting to know and because it has curves on the sides. So it's even easy to see from the sides that you've got a notification and it lights up like this. And honestly, it looks pretty cool. Next, we have sleep. So your phone goes to sleep after 30 seconds of inactivity. Now you can choose how long you want that duration to be. Raise to wake is when your phone is lying idle and the screen is off. So as soon as you lift the phone up to look at it, it wakes up the screen. Pretty simple stuff there. So underneath that, we have double tap to wake or turn off screen. So basically when your phone is locked and it's lying idle and the screen is off, if you double tap on the screen, it'll turn on and you can see some notifications if you want to. You can double tap again and it'll go off. Pretty simple there. Underneath that, we have smart cover mode. So if you get a smart compatible cover with this phone, this is useful only if you get the smart cover. So it'll unlock when you're using the smart cover, when you open this flap, I'm guessing. So there's no way to test that because I don't have that. Now glance for me is something I find very annoying. So I've obviously kept that off. It gives you like a curated uh, set of images which will show up on your lock screen. I think it consumes power and data, so I'm not going to use that. And in that we have lock screen clock format. So this you can choose the kind of format you want. I've kept it to this, which I think looks pretty good. And you can even choose the owner info. So these are my initials. That's how I've kept it. And that's how I like it. Okay, and now you even have launch camera. So if you double press the volume down button, when your screen is locked, you can straight go into camera. So it's up to you whether you want to use that shortcut or not. Next, we go into display. So this is interesting. Obviously, the first thing we have is light mode, which is currently what it's displaying in. And we have dark mode. Pretty simple stuff. We can keep it light mode. Now you can even schedule dark mode. Maybe if you go off to sleep at say 11, 11.30. So maybe at 11 o'clock, it will automatically transition to dark mode to make it easy for the eyes. Brightness level, reading mode. So this is also useful because to reduce the strain on your eyes, if you turn on reading mode, it first of all gives you that yellow tint, the blue light filter is turned on. And to reduce your eye strain further, you can choose either classic, or paper. So this emulates a paper kind of texture on the screen, which further reduces the brightness. And you can even customize this as to how much texture you want and what the temperature you want as well. So we're going to restore defaults and it's something you can check out. And it's really useful when you're using your phone by your bedside at night when the room is absolutely pitch dark. This is definitely useful. So let's turn it off for now. Next, we have anti flicker mode. And this again is useful when, again, late at night, using this in a dark room and the flickers is straining your eyes so you can turn on anti-flicker. I currently turn it on because the camera otherwise is really flickering a lot with the screen. So it's reduced a bit, though I can still see a bit of banding. But if it's regular, there is more banding as you can see. With anti-flicker, that is reduced. So it's like one line every second. So I'm getting, guessing this definitely does work. Next, we have color scheme. So here you can choose auto, which is recommended. So it will adjust the colors based on the current lighting like this. Saturated is well, saturated colors, but not the most accurate by any means. Original color is what I've kept it to because it will restore the standard color of the screen content with color calibration, which is really important, especially if you're editing uh, images, etc. And you can even choose the temperature over here of the screen, uh, the color temperature. And then you have advanced settings. If you go into this and you can customize this further, so you can choose enhanced, which will display of the all screen content in the widest color gamut possible. You have original, which will identify the color gamut automatically through color calibration. You have P3 and you have sRGB and you then you have even more uh, further customization. So if you don't know these, it's best not to toggle with this. And if you by mistake do it, just restore defaults and go back. We're just going to keep it to original, but actually I think I'll just go back and keep it to original color. This is the one I find best. Underneath that pretty simple display resolution. So either you choose Full HD Plus or WQHD. Obviously Full HD Plus will save battery with lesser resolution. But when you want with screen like this, 
on the Mi 11 Ultra, I think you'd want WQHD Plus all times. It really makes a difference and it consumes battery, but I guess it's something, something of a sacrifice you are willing to make when you get such a beautiful screen. But you can turn this on because this will automatically switch the resolution when, you're, when the screen will detect that you're not using something which needs that resolution. It will bring it back to Full HD Plus automatically and you won't even notice that. But when you need it, it'll be back to full uh, WQHD+. Underneath that, we have refresh rate. So 120 or 60, right now it's set to 120. Obviously, if you choose 60, it'll save battery even further. AI engine, uh, this, these are stuff which I would rather not use. I mean, you can use that, but for me, who uh, takes photography seriously, and when I, I mean, shoot videos with this phone, I want to see what I actually shot. Nothing gimmicky, nothing added. So. This is useful in the sense that super resolution will add, it'll enhance the videos, it'll upscale the resolution of videos. So maybe a 1080p video or maybe a 720p video will be upscaled to 1080p or 4K using AI. I haven't used this and I don't intend to use this, but it's there. Same with AI image enhancement. It'll do that, add a lot of sharpness. You have HDR enhancement as well, so it'll boost the shadows and keep the highlights in check. But these are going to be done artificially. So depending on your taste, you can use that. If not, you can just keep it off. MEMC, we had seen this a long time ago where it just adds frames and makes the videos look smoother. Again, I've kept this off because I want the most authentic uh, rendition of videos possible. Underneath that, we have font and text size. You can choose the font, uh, you can download more fonts and the text size and the rest of the stuff is uh, something which I wouldn't want to toggle and is not that essential. Now underneath that we have sound and vibration. So over here you can choose for ringtones, for alarms, events and notifications. You can choose the volumes for each of these. Now with sound assistant, you can choose whether you want uh, different tasks to have different volumes. You can set that if you toggle this on. And this is for multiple audio sources. So it'll, if you turn this on, it won't adjust the media volume during incoming notifications or while audio from other sources played. So if you don't know this, it's best not to toggle with these. And uh, just that this could be useful if you don't want one default sound level for all apps across your phone and you want it to adjust individually. Uh, so in that case, this could be useful, but I've kept it off because I want it to be same across the board. Now, underneath this, these are all stuff which are pretty simple. Now, for haptic feedback, I suggest you turn this on and not off because this will allow you to feel um, each time you press any button. Whenever you toggle something, it'll give you haptic feedback, which in my opinion makes the experience much more immersive. So I've kept it on and you can choose the level of the haptic feedback from absolutely very light to the most, uh, uh, I would say, strong haptic feedback. And I've kept it to max because it has a really good haptic engine. Maybe not quite at the level of iPhones. It is still the best, but this is definitely close. And when you keep it at max, it really makes a difference when you're typing, when you're pressing any buttons on the screen, the experience is much more immersive. Now, if you go into additional settings, you can choose dial pad tones when you're dialing in a number. You have tap sounds, I've kept it off because it gets irritating. Whatever you tap, it's gonna make a sound. I don't want that. You have screen lock sound, screenshot sound, and delete sound. So I've kept those on. You can toggle those off as well. Now, if you go into sound effects, you can choose whether you want the sound to be tuned by Harman Kardon. You can even turn it off. There are some presets, I've kept it to music. You can choose smart video voice, depending on what you're watching and you have some other options which are not that essential. Now under notifications and control center, you have how your notifications are delivered to you. So on the lock screen, they'll come up as these long tiles on the lock screen. And if you go in, you can choose which apps actually show up like that. You can turn off uh, these notifications for some apps. So that's really nice. You can have floating notifications. So when your screen is unlocked, and say you're scrolling or doing something on your phone. So it will come as a notification over here. It'll come down from top. And again, you can choose which apps are allowed to show you such floating notifications. 
and then you have badges which will just have a red dot on the app icon so you know there is something new or a notification with that app. So you can toggle what apps are allowed to actually use these features. Now for app notifications, you can choose which apps are allowed to even give you notifications on the whole. So you can choose for all the apps that you have here. Now the notification shade, I'm using the Android version, you have the MIUI version. So basically if you have a notification, so if I pull it down, so the, the Android version is like this and if I use MIUI, as you can see the Chrome logo is visible now uh, in full color. So if it was WhatsApp as well, if I had some WhatsApp notification, so the WhatsApp logo would be there and much more visible. And with Android, as you can see, it's just in uh, black and white. So it's a minor thing, but I've kept it to Android because it looks a bit more slick, but you can choose MIUI, it's equally good. Now the control center style is something that I really appreciate. If you go in here, now the old version is basically, if you pull it down from top, you get your control center here. You can pull it down further and you have all your notifications like this one under the other. But if you choose the new version, if you swipe down from the right, you get the control center here and you can toggle these on and you can expand it further like so. Or if you swipe down from the left, you get the notifications. So right is control center and left is notifications. I think this is much more useful and less cluttered. So I've left it to the new version. Now underneath that, at the end, you have status bar. So here you can have the status bar, which is on top here, show you the notification icons. So if you turn it off, as you can see the Chrome icon, which was there, there was a notification, it's gone. Now it's back. The connection speed, I don't need that. It's not really useful, but if you want to check your connection speed, you can always toggle this on. Now you can have it show your carrier when the device is locked. You can edit the name. You have the battery indicator. So you can either choose just the battery or the battery percentage inside the battery or which I have it set to right now, or you can have the battery and the percentage set to the side. I think I'll leave it to the battery percentage inside the battery. Now, one interesting thing is you can even hide the notch. Well, it doesn't really have a notch. It just has the punch hole camera, but say that is something that is well, you don't like that. So if you go into hide notch, you can do so. And as you can see, it actually fills up the pixels here because it's AMOLED. It's absolutely, it turns off the pixels there and it blends in the camera. So basically it gives you this border here, but you can no longer see the camera. If you give it to don't hide, obviously you get more screen real estate, but the camera is visible. Now you can even customize if the notch is to appear in uh, certain apps. So say you've given this hide notch without moving status bar. So you get the status bar as it is, but the notch is there. It's hidden the notch, basically the camera. So if you go back, if you go into notch in individual apps, here you can choose which apps will actually show you the hidden notch or it won't. So for Amazon, you can have always show notch. All right, so if I go into Amazon, it'll always show it. Now, if I give it to auto and I go to hide notch, now if I go into Amazon, as you can see, it's hidden. You can no longer see the camera. So you're gonna go back, don't hide, go back to Amazon and the camera is back. So a lot of customization options there. You can choose for individual apps, all the apps that you have, whether it's going to hide the notch or reveal it, it's up to you. So really nice option there. Next, we're gonna go into home screen. So under home screen, we have the default launcher right now. I haven't installed anything else, so I've kept it to the system launcher. Now, if you click on home screen, here you can choose classic or with app drawer. I've chosen this. If with classic, it shows you very clearly that there's gonna be no app drawer, it's all on the screen. So you swipe left and right on the screen and you get your uh, apps. With app drawer, you just swipe up and you get all that. I'm comfortable with this, so I've kept this option. Now underneath that, you have app categories. So once you open the app drawer over here, if you choose these app categories to be on, so 
for example, right now it's on. So if I go open my app drawer, as you can see, it's got communication, entertainment, photography. So it does that automatically. By default, it's in all. But if you want to quickly search something, you can just go into that tab. Now, if you don't want that, you can obviously turn manage app category off. So it will all be displayed under one category. But this I think is useful when you're in a rush and you just want something from maybe the photography category. You can just go into that tab and find that. So it's pretty useful. And that's about it with home screen, the ones that really make a difference and you need to know about. Now, if we go into system navigation, so you can either have on screen buttons like so, or you can have gestures. Now I've chosen gestures because I've been used to using an iPhone and it's really good for me to, you know, have gestures like this. If I don't want it, I can just flick it up. So I think this is really useful, but if you're used to the back button, the menu button, the home button, you can always choose buttons here. Now you can even, when you're using gestures, you can hide this line here. This shows you the end of the screen or the full screen. So you can turn that off. Now it's gone and you can bring it back. Now in home screen settings, these are not something which is really essential. So I'm going to skip this. Now underneath that we have arrange item in recent. So when you go into this, so say you have a lot of apps open. So I'm just give you, going to give you a demo. Say I've opened Play Store and Contacts, Photos. All right. So going back to settings, just a sec. Where are we? Okay. So going back to settings. Now I have it uh, arrangement of the recents as horizontally because this is what I've been again used to in the iPhone. So I find it easier. So if I take it up, this is how I can see all my recent apps. All right. Now you can even choose vertically, in which case it's going to come up like this, like tiles. And you flick them to the left or right to get rid of them. Now, I personally find the horizontally arranged recent items useful because when you hold it with one hand, it's just easy to flick them up and get rid of whatever apps you were using. So that's really useful. Now, blur app previews. Uh, this is something you can also use. Say you were using, uh, I have it on for camera, but you can use it for any app that you want. So basically, if you have the camera on and it keeps like a screenshot of the last thing that it was, uh, shooting right so as soon as you flick it up when you want to see your recent items it will automatically blur the camera app so it won't show whatever you were shooting so if it's useful to you you can keep it i've just kept it on like so you can use it for any app or all if you want now next we have passwords and security so if you go in here you have screen lock with your pattern you have face unlock once you set it up and fingerprint unlock once you set up the number of fingerprints that you want so it's a good idea to set up a number of fingerprints for the on-screen uh, fingerprint scanner. And this fingerprint scanner isn't always, I mean, the most reliable. It is a hit and miss sometimes. When it works, it works fine, and sometimes it doesn't. So at, during those times, having a pattern unlock to do it quickly or face unlock is more useful. And I would say the face unlock is really fast. And sometimes even before the screen registered my finger to unlock, the face unlock would work in conjunction with the uh, fingerprint unlock and it would unlock first. So for me, it's been useful because the screen unlock hasn't always been super reliable. Now, next, if you go into privacy protection, over here, you can see what or which apps are using your location, contacts, call logs, so all of these. And you can go into all permissions and see what each of these. And if you go into this, you can see which app is using these and you can deny and revoke access to them as well, if that's what you want. Now you can even choose and see which apps are using special permissions, other permissions, high risk permissions. Basically it allows you to keep your privacy to yourself as it was meant to be and revoke access to a number of apps if that's what you want. Now next we go into battery and performance. So this gives you an estimated time of how much battery is left. Now you can choose battery saver or ultra battery saver when you're in, you know, in a condition where you don't have a charger and your battery is like maybe the last 20 or 10% is left, that's when you can use this. It really limits the functions and leaves only the essentials such as calling, texting, and maybe connect to the net for doing some basic functions. And if there is a, an app that is really draining battery, so it will show you uh, that in red, 
So right now it's just battery usage uniformly, but if there was something that was drastically draining your battery, then it would show you that in red. Next, we go into apps. So over here, you can choose your system app settings. So these are the apps that was there in the system, pre-installed. And if you go into recorder, now you can choose what the settings of the recordings uh, or the recorder will be. You can choose a recording format. You can choose to mute the ringer when you're recording. So if you're recording a voiceover or anything, when you're recording your voice, you can choose toggle this on. So it will mute it and it will not allow calls to come or interrupt your recording. And you can even choose to delete your recent recordings and clear the data, whatever. And you have the same with different settings. So if you go into call settings now, so here we have some incoming call settings, which I have found to be very useful. So if you go into this, you have flip to silence ringer. So say your phone is lying like this and you get a call, you're in a meeting. So instead of muting or pressing any buttons or fiddling, if you simply turn your phone around and keep it on its face, it will mute the ringer, which is very useful. It's been there with a number of phones, but if you want to know where it is, so it's under these settings. So now this is also quite ring open lifted. So say it's lying flat on the table, you're far away and your phone is ringing. So you come, as soon as you pick up the phone and it detects that you've picked it up, it's gonna reduce the volume automatically instead of keep ringing at max volume. And you have different toggles here for increase, increasing ringtone volume. So gradually your ringtone will reach the max level of volume. And if you also want, you can have flash when ringing. So the flash at the back in the camera module will keep flashing when it's ringing to let you know like in your face that, hey, if there's a call coming, kindly pick up. Now, if you go into advanced settings, here you can get missed call reminders. So they're separated by five minutes. I've set it to no reminder, but if you want, it'll let you know if you've missed a call, if that's what you want. Now, vibrate when your call is answered is pretty useful. If you just called someone and you haven't turned on the speaker, but if you want to know when they've actually picked up the call, it'll give you a slight vibration so you know they've actually answered the call and then you can take it up to your ear and start talking. And here you have some quick responses. So if you can't take a call, you can choose what quick response you want to send and you can obviously customize these as well. Now next we go into additional settings. Over here, apart from date, time, language input, I'm not gonna go into these. Now, something useful when you're using this one-handed is ignore accidental touch on the edges. Now, because it has curved screen on all sides, with doing, I mean, if you go into this, I, I left it on auto because still now I haven't had any accidental touches, but as you can see, there is a border here. So if you're touching, if your fingers or hand touches this, it'll ignore that. Now, if you want, you can have a bigger area, you can have a small area and you can have custom. So as you can see, you can toggle this as much as you want. I think leaving it to uh, auto is the best. So a really useful feature to have here. Now next we have button shortcuts. So when you click on this, you have shortcuts and you can set shortcuts for a number of things here. So for launch camera, take a screenshot. So for screenshots, I have it to just swipe down with three fingers, partial screenshot. So you, can, you just have to go into this and mess around with this and know what you want. Now back tap, if you tap on the back of the screen, and it depends what you want, uh, double back tap, and you can choose what your phone to do. You can choose uh, to take a screenshot, turn on torch, and triple tap for something else. So when you're holding the phone like this and you tap on the back, double tap will do something and triple tap will do something else, depending on what you want it to do. Now next, we're gonna go into clear speaker. And this is useful when, if you feel that your speakers, both on top and the bottom, they're blocked by something, or if, if, it, if it was in water, you shot something in water, or maybe some debris, whatever it is, if you, wanted to, if you want to clear that, then you turn this on. We'll play a tune for, I think, 30 seconds to clear the speaker. And if there's something that is really bugging the speaker, you repeat this process two to five times, as it's mentioned here, to clear those speakers. Uh, not advisable to use any sort of pin to clear out debris. Let the phone do it as it is supposed to. Now next we go into special features. So over here you have Game Turbo, which is if you're playing a game or if you're a gamer, then this gets you into this, I, I don't know, maybe a different space for gaming. Now, this is something I'm absolutely a novice at. I'm not a gamer. I do not install any games on my phone. So I guess you can add games or apps here and gives you a boost in performance. 
I'm guessing I haven't used this. Um, floating windows is really useful when if you turn it on, say you're typing something and you need to see something at the same time, you're copying something or you're using something for reference. So as it's showing here in the animation, you can have that window pop up here and you can move it around and it's really useful say uh, i find this useful when especially i was doing something where i was inputting some bank uh, details in a uh, in the app so someone sent me a screenshot of their passbook so i had that image open here and i was typing underneath and the floating window i could move it anywhere i want i could see the account number type it in see the ifs code type it in so it's useful for those scenarios and here i think this phone has very nice demos of how you maneuver the floating windows, how you flick it to close it, how you enlarge it and how you, you know, dock it to the side. So everything is pretty nicely explained in these menus with these animations and they even give you, uh, say, if you press this, it'll give you a demo. So it'll show you what you can do. And once you're done, the tutorial closes. So pretty useful features here. Now next we have rear display. So that's the tiny display at the back this display here now this can be as useful as you want it to be so obviously it's turned on so now you can choose if you, if you want it to show notifications uh, or the contents over there so if you get a text from whatsapp it'll actually show you the message as well and you obviously can't reply from there but you can glance at it and check the message and if you double tap on the little screen it'll wake up and if you double tap again, it'll go to sleep. So I've turned that on. And you can choose the theme you want for it, the colors you want for the text, how you want it to be displayed vertically or horizontally, uh, change colors automatically. You can show the battery, like I have enabled here, and notifications as well. If you don't want notifications, you can turn it off. And it will even show you a red dot, like here, when you get a new notification. So you know you have to turn your phone and check the notification. If you don't want that, you can just turn it off. But I find this pretty useful. Over here, you can even choose how long you want the rear display to stay. So the max is 30 seconds, but you can choose 15 or 10. I've left it to 15, which is good enough for me. Now underneath that, we have second space. So this basically is like a phone within your phone. So say one part, the main, when you're using the phone by yourself, this is your space and the second space say you're giving the phone to your, your your children and they have a habit of pressing a number of buttons and making unwanted calls or making unwanted purchases so for them if you have set, go to i mean if you set up second space so over there you can probably have uh, no shopping apps there maybe just youtube kids or any app that you want to give access to they will have access to that in that second space and not all the main content which you personally use so this is something pretty useful and you can set it up and it's really easy i'm not going to do this because i don't currently want to set this up but it's something there and it's really really useful so something you should check out if you have such a scenario or if you're a very sneaky person and you don't want your girlfriend or boyfriend to see what you're up to with your phone now next we have light mode so over here this is basically enlarging whatever contents that are there on the screen it'll just make it bigger so it will look like it's less cluttered and it's easy on the eyes but i like it to be small and minimal so i've left it to how it is now underneath that you have your me account your google accounts if you go into this you can add all the google accounts that you have you can set it up there then you have accounts in sync so it will synchronize i've chose to leave it to wi-fi only when it's syncing to save my uh, carrier data. And oh, again, in Google, you have your Google accounts, your email set up, and you can choose to sync that as well. So next we have privacy. So going into this, you can see a permission manager. So you can control app access to your data. Uh, you have show password. So when you're typing a password, uh, sometimes because they are dots, we lose reference as to what we were typing in case we you know, pressed a button by mistake. So we briefly should display the characters you were typing so that you at least have an idea of what the last key that is that you pressed. And now you have some general stuff like autofill service from Google. So if you want, you can turn these on or keep these off depending on what you want. Now ads, we don't want ads so you can opt out. So I've opted out of ad personalization. Now you can do the same. 
So guys, that's about it with this deep dive into all the customization options that you get with Mi UI on your Mi 11 Ultra. Now, I'm coming from an iPhone 11 Pro Max, and as all of you would know that iOS does not allow customization. Maybe slowly, slowly, they will roll out a bit of things that they'll allow you to change in their system, but essentially, they will not let you change majority of the things. So from me, uh, Coming from iOS for the past couple of years to me UI or an Android device and seeing the ability or me being allowed to change so many things and customize so many things, in a way, it's really refreshing. It feels good that I can make this phone my own and make it work to my taste. At the same time, it sort of gets a bit overwhelming and confusing. So. It's a mixture of good and bad, mostly good, not really bad, but confusing. And I mean, people who are using iPhones, they would love that simplicity. I mean, this, I mean, I love this phone. I'm loving it. It's not without its glitches and bugs that does happen. And I'm, I'll make a different video about what I'm facing uh, on the Mi 11 Ultra, the bugs and issues that I've faced so that uh, we can address that. and maybe with the Mi UI 12.5.5, which I think is rolling out globally right now, and we'll get that shortly. So maybe those will be addressed. So that, that's a separate video. But in general, I'm loving this phone. I'm loving the screen. I'm loving the huge amount of customization, and it's a good experience thus far. And hopefully with Mi UI 12.5.5 and Mi UI 13, which will come, in some time, it'll probably take quite a lot of time, but it's definitely coming to the Mi 11 Ultra. So we'll be seeing some more major changes to the looks and get even more customization options. Anyway, guys, this video has been really long. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. You are a legend. Please smash that like button. It really means a lot to me. Subscribe to PRCast9 if you haven't already. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.